Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. Welcome to the Ultimate Manifestation Podcast. I'm your host, Reverend Sean Robert Grant, and I am thrilled to have you here with me today. Got a great episode um, after a two-year hiatus, man. You know, I've been doing my other podcasts and and I'm really excited because I've learned so much in the time that I've been removed from, you know, doing (laughs) uh, or expressing, creatively expressing myself from the standpoint of these podcasts. And I'm just thrilled to be back. And so... I want to thank you guys in advance for your support. It is truly something wonderful in every single sense of the word. And so I just want you to know how much I appreciate you for listening in, how much I appreciate you for taking the time to implement the wisdom that is flowing through me um, as an expression of the all that is the wonderful God of the universe. So thank you in advance for that, guys. Um, As always, or not always, always now, (laughs) If you have any questions about anything, any feedback, any topics you would like to hear on this podcast that I hadn't touched on as of yet, write to me at seanG04 at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. More than happy to answer any questions about manifestation as I do find myself to be a bit of a savant (laughs) as it relates to all things manifestation. So thank you in advance for that. And also guys, you know, takes a take some resources to to keep these things up and running and if you have benefited or yeah if you have benefited from this podcast in the past and you know you really want to help us out please feel free to donate no pressure at all but if it's up your alley and it's coming from a place of love we would love for you to donate to um the resources the resource pool rather with this podcast, and you can do so at uh, for PayPal, seanG04 at gmail.com, Zell, seanG04 at gmail.com, and then Venmo. If you want to use Venmo, you can do Venmo at Heart of Christ Ministry. All right. Thank you in advance for that. We appreciate you and your support um, that you're giving us, and, and, and he, whether your support is emotional spiritual, um, financial, it's all appreciated on so many levels and, and just really thankful for you guys, uh, for being here and just taking the time out to, um, to really just, just take what we got for you and implementing it into your life. So let's get rocking today, um, with today's message. And, and, you know, this is, um, this is something that's really, really up my alley and really special in regards to how to help people to manifest more successfully. And so the thing about manifestation is you don't try to manifest things, okay? When we try, and that word try, I'm going to explain what that means here in just a bit. But when we try to manifest we, we, we find ourselves in a state of lack, right? And lack does not exist in the grand scheme of things in the universe from a, a spiritual standpoint, right? So we have to be aware of that. But try, try brings in the energy of, I just don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see where this goes as opposed to conviction, if you will. Conviction says, we're going to make it happen, right? But I want to, I want to, reiterate the importance of knowing that if we're trying something more often times than not, all of our energy is not going to be conducive to making something unfold in the best way possible. Okay. So I just wanted to throw that out there, but today's topic comes with vibrational frequency. And, you know, in the beginning here, I talked about how manifestation is easy and it becomes easy when it becomes secondary, right? Because here's the reality. We're all manifesting something at some point in time, no matter what it is, 
we're always, always, always manifesting, guys. Okay, so there's never a time when you're not manifesting. There's never a time when you're you're um, you're not producing something that has come from you know your subconscious mind tapping into the universal mind. And so that's law of attraction at work every moment of existence. So when we know that, it becomes a lot easier. It doesn't necessarily um, present itself as like these magic tricks as it's been well perceived sort of from a, a, a streamlined standpoint or a, a, you know, a more mainstream, not streamlined, mainstream standpoint. It's, it's just something as natural as breathing, right? You're manifesting breath right now. You're manifesting inhale, exhale right now. You know, so when we get to the understanding that ultimately it's easy because we're already, we already are manifesting. Then we move to what we have in the title today uh, about the vibrational frequency. And to give you some background, if there's a couple of things I'm going to share with you to allow you to raise your vibration to the highest frequency possible, but it's, it's, it's not really something you can do like, um, charging up a cell phone or, you know, taking, uh, a, a Red Bull or a monster or a Celsius nowadays. <laughs> I don't take any of those, but you know, um, it's, it's, it's not along the lines of those things, um, that, Vibration is more or less, it's enhanced, it's raised through letting go of the heavy conditioning, thought patterns, feelings, emotions, and beliefs within ourselves, okay? That is what vibration, that's what raises vibration to the highest frequency. So a bit of an example here. Have you ever met someone and been around them for a bit and all of a sudden you could potentially feel sick? You could potentially feel like uh, there's something off here. Well, it's not that that person is good or bad. Understand that energy is either high, low, fast or slow. There's no good or bad energy. There's only one power in this universe and that power is good. But energy takes the form. Vibration takes the form of high, low, fast, and slow. But as you're interacting with this person, you all of a sudden feel off or you feel like something's pulling you down. So the reality is everything that's of a heavy, dense nature in the 3D world, unprocessed emotions and limiting thought beliefs included, are going to lower the vibration. And they're going to lower them in a way that is very significant to how you manifest, right? So in my own experience, I'll show you how this works and I'll use money because, you know, money's been, it's been a, 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 a really challenging yet successful topic for me. And, you know, I've also been able to write a book on this. So I have a really a deep detailed experience as to how my vibration has affected how I manifest in life. Okay. So, um, back, let's say, I want to say back in 2004, I always wanted to be financially well off just because, you know, I grew up watching a lot of the, the, the struggles for, um, the people around me and, it was it was definitely one of those things where they a lot of folks didn't necessarily understand how to how to manifest an infinite supply of money so i was always curious as to how this worked right because even at a young age there's a part of me that knew on in some way that it was not necessarily about that it was not necessarily about hard work, right? It didn't, the, the people that worked the hardest weren't necessarily the richest, weren't necessarily the most financially abundant. And so something, something told me that that wasn't, that wasn't something that I was, that wasn't a route that I was going to follow 
as it related to me manifesting. But so, you know, I remember around that time I was working like two, three, four jobs. And the interesting thing is when I had one job, I was making a certain amount of money. And then when I, when I got those two other jobs, I actually started making less. Right. And I talk about this in my book and I just, and my, my oldest brother, I'll never forget. He came in, um, came in town one day and he asked me, he said, he says, what the hell are you working for free? And then it, it just struck me because it really felt that way. It really felt like I was working for free. And so I had to basically reassess what I was doing. So I'm like, okay, I knew this, yet I still got into trying to work harder to make more money, but it didn't work. And here's the reason why. All of those jobs diminished my energy. It diminished my life force. It diminished my vibrational frequency. When you're worn out and you don't have energy, you don't have life force, you're vibrating at a very low energy field, which means you're susceptible to everything that's low, like poverty, like depression, like disgust, like all these, you know, discord in harmonies. You're, you're susceptible to that because everything vibrates at a certain level, right? So I realized it was just diminishing my energy completely. And I can remember going to sleep one night and thinking to myself, okay, if I'm going to do this, I really need to figure out a solution as to how to manifest more money into my life. You know, and so I went to sleep and the beauty of, of sleep time, especially when you go with like certain things that you have to ponder, it's a beautiful thing, the subconscious mind. You can actually ask questions before you go to bed and wind up having dreams or waking up with solutions. And that's what happened. Right. And so the the idea that I received the message I received from my intuitive guidance was raise your vibrational frequency. And so initially I'm like, okay, that's a great idea, but how do I do that? And it says, all right, first thing you do, you're going to pull out a journal and you're going to start expressing yourself. You're going to start expressing how you feel. And so it says, don't hold anything back either. Right. Because, you know, I grew up in a religious sector where I had to be filtered at times, which I think is why I, I, at at one point I just started to curse because I needed to free, you know, I needed to free that creative expression that was held back for so long. But um my intuition basically tells me, write down exactly what you feel. And so I did that. And would you know, man, I had tears coming down my eyes. I felt so relieved. I was, I was, I felt so just liberated in that I kid you not raise my energy, raise my energy to a higher frequency. I felt better about everything. And you know, what's something I realized, and this kind of gets back to how we talked about, you don't try to manifest at that point. I realized I didn't need those other two jobs, right? I just didn't. I said, you know what? I'm going to be the best at this one job that I have, which was, I believe Abercrombie and Fitch at the time. And there maybe it was Hollister. I'm not sure. But I was like, I'm going to be the best that I can at this job. And that's where I'm going to devote my attention and my energy. And so I did that. I, I journaled, felt instantly better. And I left those other two jobs that I had. And then I went back to Abercrombie. Well, shortly after, because this was like a... Eh, Shortly after there were, there were some changes happening and I got a raise, right? Un, just un, unexpectedly, I had gotten a raise because I had been there long enough to be in a position to do good enough work in order to um, receive a, a bump in pay. And this was like shortly after, like, like I, I want to say less than a month after... I had um, just did the journaling and I kind of, I, I kept up with the journey. I didn't do it every day, but I did it frequently because I knew how important it was 
to release any stagnant emotions or feelings that I might have had that I couldn't express out loud at that time. And so I can remember doing that. And then um, what else down the road? So what's interesting is there was so much going on around the time all of this was happening. But what I noticed is I grew up always being an athlete. And whenever I made time to play sports, whenever I made time to do anything recreational, it really put me into a place of joy. It really put me into a place of, of, of being at a higher vibrational frequency. And so I can remember one time my friend invited me to go out and, and, and play football. And, and, you know, I was about two, maybe almost three years removed from playing college football. So this is kind of like the first time I'd been out, but I had the time of my life, man. I had the time of my life. And it was so amazing that I just, once again, I felt so liberated because I was doing something I just enjoyed. I was doing something for the love of it. I was doing something for the fun of it. And it just, it, it just gave me so much, right? So fast forward, I want to say a week or so after that happened, we were over at uh, Tulane University playing. Fast forward a week ago after that happened, I randomly received money in the mail from, um, from, you know, she's like my surrogate godmother, if that's even a term, but, um, she's actually my brother's godmother, but she would, when my godmother passed, she, my brother's godmother kind of took me on as a godchild. And we always called her the phantom because what she would do is she would put money in an envelope. She'd, she'd do it like a drive by, right? She'd drive by real quick, take the envelope, stick them in the mailbox and drive off. She never like, unless it was a special occasion, we never really saw her. Right. So, um, it was just funny. It's funny thinking back by this because she did, she gave us so much money over the years, but she would put that money into an envelope and she'd stick it in the mailbox. And when she put it in the mailbox, she would take off, but then she would call, she would call the house. Cause you know, we didn't really have cell phones back then. It was just like landlines and she would call the house and she would be like, check your mailbox. There's something in there for you. And I kid you not, it's like a week or so after I had that amazing time uh, playing, playing football, uh, with my friends and just, you know, just enjoying myself extra hundred bucks. Right. And so 2004 ish, five ish, I'm what 23 at the time. Like to me, that was a good bit of money. That was like, Oh wow. Okay. Now I can like, you know, go out, have a nice dinner, you know, kick it with my friends, go on a date. And I had money to actually go on a date, <laughs> you know, And it just, it improved my life. And so these were subtle changes. I know that's a bit of a long story, but it just goes to show you the subtle changes that happened. And I didn't realize them until hindsight looking back, but it was the subtle changes that unfolded when my energy changed, when my energy transformed and my life force became greater, that, that opened me up to manifesting more success in my life, to manifesting more money in my life, to manifesting more happiness, right? So in a perfect world, I'll tell you, I kind of stuck with this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden things just started to increase, but it actually didn't happen that way. I actually, you know, totally got out of alignment, which is totally normal. Um, and I fell backwards up until the point where Hurricane Katrina happened, right? And so for most people, Hurricane Katrina was an absolute catastrophe. It was a hazard amongst hazard. But for me, man, I will be honest with you. It was the best thing that could have happened at that time because I'm going to be honest with you. New Orleans was at a point where it was just getting stale. Louisiana, well, not Louisiana, but just New Orleans. It was getting really stale and I needed a fresh start. And so this was about the time I was getting back into my stuff and, and, and I was manifesting really well in a sense of, you know, I had, I had a really good job going and I was back in school cause I took some time off and I went back to study uh, social psychology and 
I was really doing well in school. Like I was excelling in my speech pathology classes and my psychology classes because I actually loved what I was doing. That was the one thing that happened with me when I first started college is that I didn't choose something that I loved. But now being in a in a space where I'm I'm actually working on my energy, I could choose a degree that I loved and I excelled at it. And so everything was going well, but I knew I needed a change. I knew I needed something that was going to, you know, take me to uh, just just give me an extra like. I needed something different. There needed to be some change because it was just the same thing over and over. And so Hurricane Katrina hits. And this is like in August of 2005. Right. And nobody knows what this means or what it's going to come down to. And I mean, it just it ransacked New Orleans and it took it. I mean, none of us, once again, could have expected the magnitude and the destruction that that storm caused. But in the midst of all of that, some amazing things unfolded for me. And so I want to say, I want to say like a few months, maybe even more before it happened, I got back into like really taking care of my vibration. So, you know, I realized that life force energy was every vibration was everything. And, you know, I was working out, I was taking walks, I was going run at the track, I was like, making time for my friends, I was, you know, on the weekends, when I wasn't working, I was hanging out, you know, having a good time, just trying to be more balanced and well rounded. And and just one thing here, balance is the absolute key to manifest the highest good for yourself. When you're in balance, the universe can give you so much because it's, it's nothing is, is out of sync. Nothing is out of alignment with anything else. All right. So I just, I was on a good path and, um, I remember the storm hit and we had to leave town. It took me nine hours to get to Baton Rouge from new Orleans. And if you're familiar with Louisiana, you'll know that, um, Baton Rouge is only an hour drive (laughs) from new Orleans, but because of the, the, the bottleneck, you know, and the contra flow and stuff like that. Um, it was gridlocked. And so it took, it took a while, but I got there and there was just this new element of like, ah, okay, let's do this. Right. This is a new, and, and, you know, everything just kind of started falling into place in every area. So it was so funny because, you know, most people get, um, get misplaced or, or re replanted into a different city after a storm like that. And, um, they're not figuring out what they're going to do. But I look back and all of a sudden I, there was an Abercrombie and Fitch in Baton Rouge that was willing to like, accept me right off the bat. I literally went in there and they were like, Oh yeah, without a doubt, we got you. Like some of the people I work with were even there. And so, you know, I just jumped right in and they gave me as many hours as I wanted. I can tell you, I had a blast at that job because everybody was like my best friends and we were literally working some days, I think like 12, 13, 14 hours. So I didn't even have to really think about what was transpiring with the storm. And so that was really good for me. Like it, it, and it's so funny because even though I was working that amount of time, it didn't burn me out. Right. It actually just invigorated me because I was around people that I liked, you know, and eventually loved. And so, you know, All of a sudden, as the storm continues to roll, you know, of course, everything, you know, the the flood unfolds and it's like, oh, gosh, you know, we've lost everything. And I kid you not. When I realized I lost everything is when I was at my happiest, because all of a sudden, bam, the Red Cross is giving out these credit card gift cards. And I'm one of the first people that receives it. And I, I think it was like $350 to buy all new clothes, right? Cause I only had three articles of clothing when I left new Orleans. And so I got like this $350 credit card, which is kind of more like a gift card. Now that I think about it. And, uh, it was amazing. Cause I just went and bought all these new clothes and it just gave me a fresh look or sort of speak in this new place. And everything was just being restored. And so after that, I remember uh, FEMA was giving out, you know, checks to everybody that was 
that basically lost their property. And would you, <laughs> kid you not, I got two checks. One, I think, was for like 2500 bucks, And then another one came, I want to say four or five, six weeks later, at $2,000. And this was all money on top of what I was making as I was working. And, you know, like I said, I met a, such a great group of friends. I continued my workout. I, I got closer to my brother, spent more time with my little brother because he was at, you know, going to college at the time there. And everything just, everything opened itself up to the most amazing, like it was all amazing. And it all happened in something that should have been like the worst possible catastrophe that anybody could ever imagine. And I honestly believe it's because I had a higher vibrational frequency and here's how I did it. And I want to share this with you now. I know I had a bit of a long story, but here's how I want to share this with you. Um, now, you know, so it started off, I stuck with the journaling. It was on and off for a bit, but I journal to this day and it always helps me to express what I can't really express in words sometimes. And it's really, really wonderful. And I also do this thing called journaling out loud. And what that is, is basically I write, I just go to a place where I can say whatever I want and I just say what I feel. And I tell you, it raises my vibration. It expands my life force because it lifts off anything that's heavy off of my life force, off of my energy field, and it frees me up to feel lighter. And it's a beautiful thing. So I stuck with that. Another thing I wind up doing was, and this is, you know, sounds kind of cliche, but it's, 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 it's a reality. Working out, working out became such a pivotal, significant aspect of my life because when you move your body, you know, you don't necessarily have to lift weights, but when you move your body and you're, you're, you're doing something you love and you're, you're, you're making yourself healthier, it just really, it enhances you on a soul level. And that's what, what it did. Like in the most stressful times possible, I was able to basically just go to the gym as many times as I wanted. And I just, you know, I had the knowledge of being a, a personal trainer for a while there in New Orleans for a few years. And I just went in and I worked on my body and I, and I wasn't trying to, you know, achieve any goals or anything like that, but I worked on my body and it, it was just like, I looked the best that I had ever looked. So that brought about confidence and confidence, as we know, is a vibrational fixer upper. Like it, it, it really, once again, it enhances your life force. And I keep saying that because the greater your life force is, the more you you'll find that, that you can manifest greater things in your life, right? That's what we talk about when we talk about vibration It's just having a really strong, expansive life force. Um, another thing I did was I spent a lot of time praying. I spent a lot of time praying and meditating, right? Praying because, you know, that allowed me to connect to the source, to the God within myself. And meditation allowed me to listen to what the God within myself would say. So whenever I would get intuitive guidance, right, I was easily able to discern and act on it. And that changed my energy because I wasn't just frivolously running around going blind. You know, I'm acting blindly, I was acting with purpose. I was acting from a place that intuitive guidance was leading me to the best situations for me. And it, it was just phenomenal, let me tell you. And so one of the last things I did was I got into a gratitude practice. And so if you really want to change your life, especially on a mental and emotional level in the beginning until you reach that spiritual space, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to make it a daily, I don't want to say effort because effort just kind of seems like you're pressing, but you want to make it a daily practice to implement gratitude in every way, shape or form. And I was just so grateful for everything and how it turned out. All the people I had met, all the blessings that I'd received, all of like the, the time I spent with my family, like the time I had with my my oldest brother and my youngest brother because they were both in the same city and and you know all these amazing unfoldments, all these amazing manifestations happen 
like just one right after the other. And I spent almost two years in Baton Rouge after the fact. And I just loved every bit of it. You know, there were some challenges for sure. But the reality is it was just one blessing after the other. And I understood the reason why so much amazing stuff happened there was because in Baton Rouge, I was carrying a higher vibrational frequency. And I was carrying that frequency because I began to work more towards, and when I say work, I'm not like pressing, but I begin to ask intuitively more about what could take me to a higher level. And, and, and I just continued that. And it gave me, it gave me a life force that, that drew in some of the greatest experiences ever. And I'll just never forget that time in my life because it was something that was really quite wonderful and amazing for me to experience. Um, so with that being said, it's understanding, you know, if you are going to manifest um, things that you're, you've been dreaming about, things that you've been really wanting for your life and you want to do them in a, in a, in an expedient capacity, you know, you have to, uh, you have to get to a place where you can, you can really expand your vibration. And if I'll tell you anything, it really gets down to making sure you express yourself freely and authentically, and you let go of the limiting beliefs and the limiting emotions that are sometimes programmed within us through childhood. The more you let go of that stuff, and the more honest you are with yourself, the higher your vibration is going to be. And it's going to lead to you doing other things that continually help raise that vibration. I promise you with every fiber of my being, the more honest and authentic you are with yourself, the higher your vibration will be. And it will lead you to do stuff like working out. It will lead you to do stuff like recreation, sports and stuff like that. Treating yourself to a movie, having a good time like that's the catalyst because it always starts within us. And from there, it just, it's going to take you to, to new heights. And this, this goes wherever you are in life, whether you're 20 or you're 60, working your vibration, understanding the impact of your vibrational frequency and doing what you're guided to do to help it to expand is, is going to benefit every single area of your life, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and, and it's easy, right? Because as we mentioned, you don't have to um, try anymore. You don't have to say, okay, I got to do this. I have to do this this way. No, no. You love doing it because it's benefiting you and it's benefiting everybody around you. Okay. So with that being said, guys, that wraps up today's message. Long message, about 33 minutes. So glad you were here to join me. Um, I know you probably got some great tidbits from it. So thank you in advance. Also feel free to share this message. It's available on all the outlets. So please feel free to share it. Um, if you have any questions, once again, write to me at SeanG04 gmail.com. If you enjoyed this podcast or any podcast from the past, <clears throat> excuse me, please, by all means, donate. If it is in resonance with you in alignment with you, if you're coming from a place of love, we would love to to have your don your resources and your donations to help us to continue to keep this podcast and others on the air to continue to empower and uplift people. You can do so at um you with PayPal at Sean G04 at gmail.com, Zell, Sean G04 at gmail.com, Venmo at Heart of Christ Ministry. And so with that being said, that wraps up today's message. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Greatly, greatly appreciate you. This has been a wonderful time. I'm happy. Got to go down memory lane and happy I got to share a lot of uh, the experiences I've had that have affected and, and, and not just affected, but enhanced and added to my life in, in a lot of ways. And so I'm just thankful that I had the opportunity to share with you. So you guys have a wonderful night, wonderful day, wherever you are. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye bye.